Yo guys, what is up? This is Real American Studios, and first off, if you have not seen the vi the uh, draft recap, go ahead and check that out, because this is the redraft, and basically this is where I've taken any trades we made, I, uh, I went back to the original picks, or I made a trade of my own. And we're going to start this off with round one, pick five. I didn't change anything to a tongue of Iloa, QB out of Alabama. All right, but before we get into this, if anybody was gone before the pick, I did not change anything about, I, I didn't take anybody that was gone before the pick. Anybody that was there in the real life draft, I took. I took, if they were there and if they were still there on the board and I wanted them, I took them. But yeah, round one, pick five, Tua Tungvaloa, QB out of Alabama. All right, we took him in real life. My favorite pick of the draft. Enough said. Round one, pick 18, Caleb on Chase on Edge out of LSU. This guy is going to be a beast. And Jacksonville got him at pick 20. I took him at pick 18. So. I mean, what can I say? I had to take him, man. I mean, he's there. Probably one of the most talented guys on the board. If not the most talented guy on the board, I had to take him. And then that leads me into round one, pick 30. Xavier McKinney, safety out of Alabama. I think the Giants got him at 35 or 36. We need safety. Xavier is an absolute monster. Uh, if, it, if it wasn't him, I would have chosen at Anton Winfield, safety out of Minnesota. He is also a beast, but Xavier, man. And I'm an Alabama fan, too, so you have to take that into account. Next up, with round two, pick 39, I took Jalen Johnson, the cornerback out of Utah. We took Noah Igbenogany, cornerback out of Auburn. I, I like Jalen better. I really do. And I, I mean, and I mean, I had already taken my safety. So, what what else does the take there? So I took Jalen Johnson. I think he went around like forty eight or something like that. But I took him round two, pick forty five. I traded a second and third round pick in twenty twenty one to trade up to forty five, and I took J K Dobbins, running back out of Ohio State. Probably my favorite running back in the draft, to be honest. I I like J K Dobbins. I really do, and I and God, we were so close to getting him at 56. Baltimore took him at 55. That's just what Baltimore needed. They already got Mark Ingram, Gus Edwards, Justice Hill, Lamar Jackson. J.K. Dobbins is just what they needed, right? Nobody's stopping Baltimore. Imagine if Baltimore had managed to get somebody like Tyler Johnson in the late rounds or Antonio Gandy-Golden. There would be no stopping them. So since I traded that, I also still have round two pick 56 where I took Josh Jones offensive tackle out of Houston. I, Josh Jones, I, I like Josh Jones. I think he's going to be a very good offensive tackle. Um, I mean, that's probably my favorite offensive tackle in the draft. I really wanted him. Uh, we took, we had a chance to take him at 70. We took Brandon Jones, who I'm also happy with. Arizona got him two picks later, and it kind of broke my heart a little bit, man. So at round three, pick 70, I took, and this is a guy, I think he went 81 to the uh, Las Vegas Raiders, Lynn Bowden, wide receiver out of Kentucky. This guy can do it all. If we wanted to run some Wildcat, this guy could be your Wildcat QB. I mean, this guy was playing quarterback out of Kentucky, managed to, uh, even though he's a wide receiver, Managed to lead Kentucky to a bowl game. And, I mean, you knew the guy wasn't really throwing the ball. You knew the run was coming, and you still couldn't stop him. I mean, sorry about that. I hit my mic. But you still couldn't stop him. I mean, so, I mean, and not to mention Albert Wilson and Jakeen Grant. They're both good. They're also both injury prone. And I think Lynn Bowden. Even though he's kind of taller, I think he's like 6'2", 6'3". He can still play the slot. I mean, and he's still got the speed to make up for Albert Wilson. Well, not quite the speed, I would say. But, however, if we do want to replace Albert Wilson and Jakeem Grant next year, we, I would rather keep Jakeem because 
Tua really thrives with those speedy receivers like Henry Ruggs, Jalen Waddle, which Jalen Waddle would be my pick probably. <coughs> 2021 draft, Jalen Waddle. But here, Lynn Bowden's a guy. Now, I still made the uh, trade down with Green Bay, which is why I had pick 30. Uh, I traded the same trade, 136 and 141 for 111. And I took, this is the guy I kept talking about in the first video with the Cowboys. Tyler Beard, a center out of Wisconsin. I think Dallas got an absolute steal there. Uh, Travis Frederick reti retired. Why not get a steal of a center? This guy's a beast. I'm sorry. I, I think that's the steal of the draft. Now, I, in this situation, I drafted J.K. Dobbins. I did not trade for Matt Breida, so we keep pick one, pick uh, pick one fifty three. Who like, well, like we traded the San Fran, and we took the same guy San Fran took there, Colton McVitz, offensive tackle out of West Virginia. He's gonna need some development, obviously. Uh, he's probably more of a depth guy, but at the same time, we need tackles. So why not try your best to fill that position? Uh, we need offensive tackles. So pick 154. He's going 10 picks earlier than when we t traded up for him at 164. Curtis Weaver, the edge out of Boise State. He's too good to pass up. You have to take him. I mean, he's too much. Like, like I said, I think he was the steal of the draft. Round 5, pick 173, continuing to address the offensive line. N I'm probably going to butcher this name. Natain Muti, offensive guard out of Fresno State. Um, obviously, he's making a pretty big jump to the NFL, but once again, you're adding depth along the offensive line. You signed Eric Flowers in the offseason. You have Michael Dieter, who you drafted third round last year. So, I mean, why not? You Offensive line depth is important too. So if you can draft these guys, even if they don't turn out to be starters, they're depth guys. Why wouldn't you? And I mean that. I mean he's pretty good. He's going to need development, but he's pretty good. Round six, pick one eighty five, Khalil Davis, defensive tackle out of Nebraska. Um, now see, I didn't really address the defensive line early on. Um, so. There you go. I mean, there's the defense tackle. I think this guy could play the nose tackle. I mean, he's a pretty big guy. Uh, I, well, um, let me actually look it up. I'm going to look it up real quick. Because I want to know this guy's size. I should have done this before the video, my bad. I mean, 6'2", 309. So maybe a little undersized for nose tackle, but... Once again, this is round six. I mean, you're really just trying to find diamonds in the rough, and this guy's pretty good. Then I made a trade. I traded pick 227 and pick 251 in round seven, and I traded up to take, uh, so it's 197 round six. I traded up to take Quez Watkins, wide receiver out of Southern Miss. Uh, he's, pretty, he's a pretty explosive player, and, I mean, I, I really do like him. I like Quez Watkins. Um. Uh, and hopefully, you know, he can be that diamond in the rough because he was a beast at Southern Miss. He really was their, their entire offense. So uh, hopefully it translates here. And then finally, round seven, pick 246. I took Daryl Williams, an offensive lineman of Mississippi State. He is huge. He's, I think he's like 6'7", 340. He's huge. And he can play center, guard, or tackle. He can play whatever you want him to play. And... He signed as an, Kansas City signed him as an undrafted free agent. Kansas City also is a team that really needs a center. Kansas City signed him, so Kansas City clearly sees something there. So I think this guy is going to make the roster possibly as a starter in Kansas City. So that's just my prediction right there. And then I still signed Kirk Merritt, the undrafted free agent wide receiver out of Arkansas State, who I think can be pretty solid. But if everything goes to plan, our receiving core can have Preston Williams, Devontae Parker, Jakeem Grant, uh, Lynn Bowden, Quez Watkins, and Kirk Merritt. And if all six of them turn out to be pretty solid, we can have a really solid receiving core for Tua. 
He can have J.K. Dobbins and Jordan Howard in the backfield. Mike Gesicki still at tight end. And then the offensive line, you added uh, Josh Jones, Tyler Biadas, both guys who I think are going to be really good. Um, and you possibly got a got a nice diamond in the rough in the Tain Muti in the late round. Colton McVitz, Daryl Williams, they could all be diamonds in the You basically drafted an entire offensive line in this draft. I mean, so... I basically drafted an entire line. So if imagine all five of them turn out to be good, then you got to pay all five of them at one time. Uh, like Xavier McKinney, you're putting him back there. You've already got Bobby McCain and Eric Rowe, so uh, maybe you can cut Eric Rowe. He's being paid a little too much for my liking. Jalen Johnson, along with Byron Jones and Xavier Howard. That could be pretty solid. Curtis Weaver and Caleb on Chase on come both coming off the edge. Sounds pretty good to me. I mean, you've already got Shaq Lawson and Emmanuel Ogba and Kyle Van Noy, so you can have these guys. You can help them develop some too. I mean, Khalil Davis, potential diamond in the rough there. So. And obviously, you got your QB, too. You got your QB of the future. So, I mean, and that's basically the redraft, guys. Real American Studios out. Peace out, all my homies.